Greetings viewers, welcome to my channel and in today's video we are going to be looking at and discussing how to do maintenance and repair on a Honda 4514 uh, riding lawnmower. So as you can see this machine has been stripped down quite a bit down to the frame off camera. I have all the other parts over here, uh, the, the back end, the foot plate and the uh, hood, but the machine came into the shop, a gentleman wants to get it uh, running back to uh, normal. Uh, it came in with the multitude of problems that I know of that we were able to see. There might be some other stuff that may not be known until we get the engine running again. But specifically, I wanted to talk about how to work on this without having to strip the machine down this far, depending on what you're working on. So I was using the service manual to get the machine down to this uh, level of uh, disassembly. And the question that I was often looking for, uh, looking for an answer really, is can you do the timing belt in the water pump without having to pull the engine, which is what the service manual says. And the answer is you do not have to remove the engine from the frame in order to work on the timing belt in the water pump. So I've worked on other Honda machines before, but in general, Honda machines are very difficult to work on. Uh, you have to remove a lot of stuff, as I mentioned, to get access to certain parts. I'm going to start off with this machine. I had to strip it down all to this extent anyway because there was something going on with the drivetrain. And uh, they originally wanted me to do the uh, water pump and the timing belt. And what's interesting I find with these, uh, with these machines is for... The way that they're built, they're built very, very well. This is probably one of the heavy, heavier duty built machines. And this double cylinder uh, liquid cooled is only 14 horsepower, but it's a very, very well built motor from what I can tell. Uh, the issue that I'm going to have here, and if I can show it to you, this is the original timing belt from 1989. Uh, you really can't tell on camera, but from what I can see on the naked eye, I do not see a lot of... Uh, dry rot or anything like that, but what I do see for sure is that there is a lot of slack here in the uh, in the belt. Which this, if it wasn't changed, it would have definitely fallen off and caused a problem. I don't know if this is a interference motor where if this were to if this belt were to fall off, the valves would hit the cylinder uh, piston inside. But uh, good thing we got it here to this point, so we can change it out and get this back to the way it was. So the other issue that the customer had indicated was that the drivetrain wasn't working. Uh, you would push the pedal forward, it wouldn't go, uh, it was making a really bad noise, and I found that to be the problem with the drive shaft. This is where the drive shaft would normally go. You have your dampers that are connected to the flywheel and it runs all the way back to uh, the transmission which is over here. It's got the dampers, it's held in by three bolts here, and then you got three bolts going here. And then the drive shaft goes across. The only way that you can take this drive shaft out is to actually take the pedestal out. I don't know why they would ever make something like that. Here's the pedestal, and I still have the cable connected to the clutch up here. But here's the uh, tunnel, the start of the tunnel for the drive shaft. It's not big enough to hold to take the entire drive shaft out and then also leave this in here, which I believe this needs to be fixed too. The bushings have worn out for the steering box. Here's the drive shaft, and. It, it's a pretty good size drive shaft. I don't know. It's maybe about three, three or four feet long. But here's the front where the where it was hooked up to the flywheel. That damper basically destroyed itself, and then it started destroying the uh, shaft here. And then on the back side here, where it goes to the transmission, this is what it should look like. Um, it's just the rubber dampers are right here, and you can see the back one is in pretty good shape. It's missing the uh, the plastic. Uh, collet that goes in there. I did break that when I was trying to separate it from the shaft, but that's easily replaceable. The front one here really is in bad shape here, and this was the cause of the problem that he was having with the drivetrain, I believe. This was basically uh, stripping out here on the front of the drive shaft and not spinning the transmission. I'm hoping that there's nothing else with the transmission, but then again, you know, from my understanding and from what I've been told, uh, Honda transmissions, hydrostatic transmissions, as long as you don't have any leaks or bad seals or anything like that, you don't need to flush out the hydrostatic uh, fluid or anything like that. It should last for the life of the machine. But uh, from what I can tell, the fluid's in uh, good shape. It's not uh, black or anything like that, and it's at the proper level. And uh, I'm just going to leave that be for right now. 
So another quick tip that I ran into in order to get that timing belt cover off, once you undo the 10 millimeter bolts around it and all the wiring harness pieces, uh, you will not be able to take the cover off pulling it up and out of the engine area. You're actually going to have to loosen it and push it down through. And the way you're going to need to do that is if you see that little vacuum switch here, it's mounted on the this cross member with the 12 millimeter bolt. You're going to have to take that and remove it from this uh, cross member push it out of the way and then that way you can get the timing belt cover to go down underneath the frame to remove it. Finally a forward at removing the flywheel. You will have to remove the ignition coil. I just moved it out of the way here safely. Uh, I do not know what size nut that is. I used a 15 16 uh, socket in order to get it on there. It fits but it's still kind of loose maybe a few thousands. It's definitely metric. Unfortunately, I did not have something that large, but I uh, stabilized the uh, flywheel with the strap wrench and I just used the breaker bar right here to get it off. And thankfully, with once I got it loose, I just pulled a couple threads back and hey, the five pound sledgehammer does come in handy. Uh, a little bit of prying power uh, behind it without hurting anything and this is now loose and free to be removed. So once you get to this point here, uh, I remove the flywheel and then it exposes the bracket that holds the ignition coil on top of the flywheel and then the charging coils which are on the inside of the flywheel that are mounted on the same bracket. Here's the bracket right here. Uh, the ignition coil will mount on here. You have one, two, and three bolts that will hold that on and then these two bolts here will uh, hold the two charging coils and already as you could tell I have a pretty bad problem here uh, looks like these charging coils were the insulation has broken down I don't know if the guy was having trouble with charging his battery or not but obviously we cannot leave uh, these charging coils in this state we're gonna have to replace them finally uh, the charging coil wires are routed there's a little uh, pin that holds it here in this hole and then a rubber grommet which will send it over to here to the boot that I had mentioned before and the timing marks if you see that little uh, and I don't know how well you can see it on camera there's a little arrow it has to match up with the T on the camshaft pulley and then on the bottom here there's another uh, timing mark on the timing belt pulley off the crankshaft those two marks need to line up and considering as I zoom back out here look how loose this belt is. I'm surprised that it did not uh, slip a uh, slip a tooth or anything like that. It actually has been uh, it stayed in time which is very very uh, surprising but kinda goes to show the engineering behind it. This should really be much tighter uh, to allow more uh, stretching over time but it's just uh, typical belt wear. For those that are interested here's the inside of the flywheel. It's a little dirty. I'm gonna clean it up but there are four large magnets inside. So one of the main tasks I had to do was to change out the timing belt and the water pump and the way you do that is once you get the timing belt and the water pump out the water pump is held in by four bolts one two three on the bottom here and then the fourth one is a hidden bolt it's actually in the back here you're actually gonna you don't necessarily need to remove the shroud it actually is a real pain but you'll have to go on this side it's a 10 millimeter bolt and you'll have to loosen it up in order for the timing belt to release it slides this way to put tension on the timing belt. The service manual says to have, once it's in its proper tension over here with about four and a half pounds of force, you, which isn't a lot by the way, uh, you should only have it deflect about four to five millimeters. That's what the service manual says, but this, you don't want it to be super tight to the point where there's no deflection. You have to have some play because it will stretch out over time but uh, you can use a little pry tool to get in between the water pump and here in order to tension it and then you start tightening these bolts uh, first. The torque spec for these eight millimeter bolts is seven foot pounds once you get it in place to where you want it to be. That 10 millimeter on the back I think is a little bit more. You'll have to consult the manual, but I would say that this is in pretty good shape. It's a little hard to see but if you can look right there, if I can focus on it, that's your 10 millimeter bolt that's right behind the water pump. And then you can see the front of the water pump right there. It is tight, but you can get access to it. 
And one more thing while you're putting this in, once you get it all tightened up and everything, spin the engine. You can use your hands here and spin the engine this way. Make sure everything lines back up. I actually made the mistake where it was off by one tooth and it really just comes down to, you know, getting it on there right, make sure that the teeth engage. This timing belt, is the teeth aren't facing a certain way or anything like that, they're just straight up. So there's no wrong way to put this if you put it on this way or if you flip it, flipped it around and put it the other way. There's no wrong way to put it on here. But uh, just wanted to pass that along in case you're wondering. And if it makes things easier, I know it did for me, to move the shroud out of the way, you would probably need to loosen the two carburetor bolts. This piece comes off and then slide the carburetor off. You don't need to take the whole carburetor off because this piece is what's holding this uh, shroud on. You pull this away, you'll have a little bit of flex to get your wrench in there. That'll make it that job a little bit easier. Okay, the next thing you have to do is to reinstall the bracket that holds the ignition coil and the charge coils. I did replace the charge coils. And uh, the way that you have to put this on, there's three bolts, there's one here. There's one right here, and then there's another one just below here. This one is actually shorter than the other two, so keep that in mind. I'm also putting a little bit of Never Seize on the shaft of the crankshaft, and I did replace the Woodruff key. You don't necessarily have to change the Woodruff key, but since you have it apart, it's a good idea to do so. It's a small and cheap part to do. I did clean up the flywheel. Uh, there was some little metal filings, but there was a lot of black dust in there, probably from uh, just running for so many years, but uh, a quick cleanup and uh, it's ready to be reinstalled. Here's an interim update on the rebuild. I do apologize, I haven't been able to get a lot of this on camera, but I wanted to show you a couple things that I ran into so that you can avoid it. Uh, as you can see, I've gotten the timing belt cover put back in. I got the battery and the pedestal and the dashboard all back in. The wiring harness is back in and uh, also got the drive shaft in. The drive shaft was the first thing that I put in because as you can see, this is why I didn't understand why you would want to be able to uh, take the drive shaft out if you didn't remove the pedestal. If you take out the steering column, you should have enough room to dr drag the drive shaft out once you disconnect this uh, rear damper piece here. The dampers are brand new. I put some white lithium grease inside so they don't stick and uh, torque down these 12 millimeter bolts uh, to specifications for on both the rear and the front. As you see it's coming back together you can understand why the service manual would suggest that you take the whole engine out in order to service it. Uh, really you can't get access to most of the stuff here. There's your uh, there's the dust cover and there's the damper with the drive shaft connected. And again, you could work on it, but it's not very easy to work on with your hands in between these two uh, posts here for the pedestal. Another note, I did change out the ignition coils as well. And there's a long wire and then a short wire. The long wire goes to the front cylinder and the short wire, hey, goes to the back cylinder. So right now I got the steering wheel in there loose just for right now in case I need to take anything else back apart so I can move it around much easier now. It's got new bushings in the steering so it makes it a lot easier to steer now. My next task is to take out the gas tank and replace the fuel filter. The fuel filter is located right here and it is a pain in the butt to get to. The only way that I can see getting access to this is either going from underneath which is basically using your hands to see or I could take the gas tank off, which is basically looks like two bolts, and uh, work on it from there. So as you can see, I'm working on it right now. I have the tank off. I really can't get too close to it because my hands are dirty, but my plan to take the tank off and then put the new filter on while taking the old one off, perfect success. It's a new day, and I have an update on the machine. I got much of the rear portion of the machine reassembled. Got the foot plate, got the rear portion with the seat. I got the engine running, the engine runs smooth. I did change out the coolant and drove it around the yard for a few minutes and I'm happy to report that the drive shaft and the damper was definitely the problem from, the, from a drive wheel perspective. There's nothing wrong with the transmission. I'm very happy to report that the whole rear half of the, of the machine has been gone through with a fine tooth comb we're all set to go as far as that is concerned.
So I need to address uh, some of the oil leaks on this machine. I know that the oil drain bolt is where one of them is. It was actually over tightened and the thread stripped out. I'm going to have to put a new drain plug in but oversize it. I got this kit where we can figure out if it's, I think it's a, there's a 13, 15, 17, and I believe that's a 20. I'm thinking it's going to be one of these two, but I got some new drain bolts with uh, some crush washers underneath for each of them. We're going to use that to fix that problem. Currently right now I'm using one of those temporary Dorman type of rubber stopper plugs, and it actually works very well. You can get it at AutoZone for like six bucks, but it actually will seal uh, your drain plug and not, and you can possibly leave it that way, but I'm going to properly fix that and put a new oversized drain bolt in there. The last oil leak that I need to address, I didn't notice until after the engine had warmed up and uh, turns out it's the front main seal and you could see where it's been leaking. Here's the clutch, here's the fan, and as the engine's running, it'll start slinging the oil when it's hot enough to weep out of the seal. We're going to have to go and replace that. I did get the part from Honda. It was a special order item, but this is the part number that you need for the front main seal specifically. Now, I know you're wondering, what about the rear main seal? No, the rear main seal was fine. When I was working in the back there, there was no oil leaks whatsoever, and it was in good shape. So thankfully, the rear main seal doesn't need to be replaced. But if you ever did have to take the rear main seal and replace that, you'd have to go through the whole thing again like I was doing just for the timing belt and the water pump in order to change it. So in order to get to the front main seal, it's located right here. It's behind the clutch assembly. It's right there. And what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to drain the coolant out again. The radiator is going to need to come off the supports, take the two hoses apart, and then we're going to need to remove the fan and then remove the large bolt that's on the main shaft. And then we're going to have to pull the clutch out. The clutch out, uh, the clutch is located right here. And then you have the friction plate behind it. Once you take those uh, parts out, then you should be able to get access to behind it where the front main seal is and we can replace that seal. So one thing I did not do yet, as you can tell, is that it's still pretty dirty there. I want to leave it that way because I want to make sure that that's where the oil leak is coming from. And it really can't come from any other place. It's definitely the front main seal. But I'll do a nice clean up here once I've replaced it and we'll make sure that it's not going to uh, leak again. Okay, here we go. We've removed the clutch assembly and we've removed the fan assembly in order to get to the front main seal. Now we can go ahead and uh, pry this out and take it out and replace it. Now, what I'm noticing here, there was a lot of caked up oil here. And as you can see, it's been sitting here for a number of years and it's been leaking like this for quite some time. Uh, it's really hard to tell. Uh, most of the time it is this uh, front main seal that'll go. But I just wanted to check to make sure that this is your oil pump. There's a O-ring under here and then there's a gasket around here. From what I can tell, it looks like it's just been leaking from the bottom here and you know slinging it all over the place i don't see any other leaks from the oil pump cover here i did make sure to tighten up these bolts to make sure they're within spec and they are but um, so we're going to clean this up change out the seal and we'll uh, start to reassemble okay so we've just finished uh, replacing the front main seal here and that was definitely leaking but I'm going to also change the oil pump here. It uh, looks like the seals were uh, worn out. Uh, as you can see, this is where the oil pump gear goes inside here. And then the oil pump housing, this is the plate for it. And you got your two pieces on the bottom here, and that does all the pumping. The seal goes right here. There's one here. And then you have the gasket that goes around the housing. And you can tell from the age of it how flaky and, you know, very. it's a very hard it's worn out over time. So that was the reason why this was also leaking okay, too. Uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna replace this here. And then there's also a seal here for where the oil pump gets fed. I'm gonna replace that uh, O-ring as well. Put everything back together and hopefully we won't have any more leaks. Hey everyone, this is a follow up on the 4514 video. Uh, there was a few things I didn't have a chance to work into the video and as you see, I'm currently editing it. 
Uh, I also did not get a video of it finally assembled and running, but uh, I can assure you that everything was fine after I delivered it back to the client. Uh, I wanted to talk about the mowing deck and the uh, drain plug that I expanded to a 15 millimeter. It was originally a 12 millimeter, and I just want to show this to you. That is the original part number. It's a one and a half pitch, and the same thing goes with the 15 millimeter that I just put in there. It's a one and a half pitch, and uh, the way that it's uh, this engine is designed, it's not like an oil pan. It's actually the lower half of the block, the upper and lower half of the block sandwiched together between the uh, crankshaft. So you really don't want to uh, be messing with this bolt over tightening it. And if you're scared about over tightening it, you really should be. It's the service specification says it's 33 foot pounds, which is pretty standard uh, for a 12 millimeter bolt, but. Not everyone has a torque wrench to uh, measure that uh, amount of force. So I would suggest if you're going to be uh, doing your own oil changes on this machine, uh, get yourself one of these. It's a, it's a valve from Fumoto, and this is the one that will actually fit the normal size. It's a 12 millimeter with a 1.5 uh, thread pitch. All it is is basically it's a lever action valve, and it's got a little plastic clip here that would normally uh, hold it closed so it won't open up on you accidentally when the machine's running. And uh, I got myself uh, one of those uh, elbows for for on the uh, on the end here that's got the short nipple. And this is actually on my Honda Fit. I love it, and I think it really makes sense on a lot of the lot, pretty much any machine, really, especially if you're doing your own oil changes. These are a really good uh, this is a really good product in my opinion. Now, unfortunately, they don't have any 15 millimeter uh, valves, so what we're going to have to do, this client is now going to have to use this size crush washer, and they can be uh, ordered. You just have to, maybe have to order them on Amazon, like right here, but um, it's 15 uh, millimeters on the inside and 20 millimeters on the outside. This should uh, more than take care of that for this guy's purposes. Finally, on the mowing deck, uh, I didn't really run into any major trouble. It was in really good shape. Uh, the only thing I did find was uh, there are a few parts that are no longer available from Honda, and you're going to have to go to a different method of replacing that uh, with a comparable part. So what I have here on Parts Tree, and I, I have I've used Parts Tree uh, for some of the parts during this rebuild, but I've also used Boats.net for the majority of the parts. I just find that their pricing is a little bit more competitive. But uh, Parts Tree is still very much a, a, a good site to go and at least check out the diagrams, and uh, they have a really good customer service line. The part that I'm talking about that uh, is no longer available from Honda is this spindle. Now, I didn't have to change any of the spindles on this particular machine, but this one here, 76212-758-L00, this information is inaccurate. You can no longer get this spindle from Honda. The only way, if you have the spindle and it's worn out and you need to replace it, what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to go to the 3813's mowing deck, which is the 38-inch mowing deck, and get that part number instead. And it's the same part number, but it ends in L20. And the way I know that this it will work is because I was working with another gentleman on the My Tractor forums. He actually bought this particular part number. He was working on a 42-inch deck, and he bought this one. And the only difference is, is that where uh, on the side where the pulley goes, it's about three eighths of an inch uh, taller than the original 42-inch uh, mowing deck pulley. I meant uh, the shaft there. So the way you can adapt this particular part number to uh, the 42-inch deck is you'll have to either turn it down on a lathe or you can use a hacksaw, cut it back, and then file it smooth. And then this particular part ending in L20 can be uh, used for the 42-inch deck. And this information comes from a gentleman named Lane. He's on the My Tractor forums. Thank you so much for the help on this one. This is on the My Tractor forum. I was working with him on that. You can see my screen name there. But Lane, thank you so very much. Really appreciate the information. So that wraps up this particular project. Uh, well, I wanted to thank everyone for not only watching but also bearing with me. This is this has been a machine I've really had a very steep learning curve on. And I know there's a lot of information out there, but I don't think there was a, a lot of information in terms of like a video or pictures and stuff like that. I have started to put together uh, my own thread over here on the uh, my tractor forums. 
you know, you can certainly take a look at it. It'll be in the description below. Uh, again, if there's any questions, I'll do my best to answer them. And uh, this project I'm going to consider closed. Thank you so very much for the gentleman who let me uh, trust me to work on his machine. Uh, my next project is he actually has a 3813 I'm going to start to work on. Uh, similar type of uh, work to be done, timing belt, water pump change, and anything else that needs to be addressed. And I will certainly be doing a video on that uh, here in the near future to provide uh, more information to, to, for other people that may be working on these machines. There seems to be quite a bit of a community and support for them. Uh, I definitely had a, a good, you know, a good time working on them in terms of learning. And again, thank you again for everyone's uh, support. Please subscribe and cheers, guys.